Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trace Socks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And holy crap, are we about to see the 21st century standard oil breakup of Apple that was filed by the Department of Justice this week? We're going to talk about the lawsuit. We're going to talk about some other prior uh, antitrust actions and what that could mean for us as Apple shareholders. We'll get to it. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> unaware of this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is fun then because I I didn't I I have a new baby. I haven't looked into this. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. So, you know, Apple, my largest individual holding, so obviously when this news came out this week, I had to really pay attention to it. I read the entire eighty eight page lawsuit, which uh, is a lot of garbage. Um, you read eighty eight pages of a lawsuit? Yeah, yeah. It's really fascinating <sighs> stuff. It's worth it if you're an Apple shareholder, I guess, I think at least a few minutes of time to do it. Debatable. This is what the headlines are generally saying. DOJ sues Apple or iPhone Monopoly, a landmark antitrust case. All right. Um, okay. There's one point from this article that I really want to highlight. Now, they do talk about the Wall Garden, Apple Pay, some of the individual issues. You know, they make it sound like it's very much an iPhone targeting lawsuit, but that's not really how I read it. They, they talk a lot about iPhones, but they really talk about individual aspects of technology based on iPhones. So I did see a little bit, isn't, wasn't this the fact that they made Android green text and iPhone blue text? Wasn't that in this? Yeah. 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 The green text lawsuit, green text bubble lawsuit. That's definitely part of it. Yeah. But that makes sense though, because it's using one as SMS, one as Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, I, I'll hold off on the nuance of that for right okay. now. All right. Uh, I, I want to really get to like the the point of what Apple, I mean, what the Department of Justice is asking for at this lawsuit. All right. Shares were down 4% on Thursday. Breakup of Apple, if successful, would be the only of a handful of breakups under the Sherman Act. The DOJ has considered using it in other antitrust cases, but has not done so since Bell System in 1982. Okay. This is really interesting to me that CNBC thought they had to mention breakup of Apple in this. All right. Um, because we're going to go through like some of the claims here, and then we'll, we'll talk about what the, the Department of Justice is asking for. Right. Okay. Um, so, all right. Lawsuit could force Apple to make changes to some of its most valuable businesses. iPhone, in which it reported $200 billion of revenue last year. Uh, Apple Watch, $40 billion of revenue last year. And Apple Services, $85 billion of revenue last year. Okay. Apple stock obviously responded pretty negatively to this news right off the bat, down, like I said, 4%. And when you're talking about one of the most valuable companies in the world, that's a pretty good chunk of market cap that actually disappeared, right? Um, yes. So I went back and looked at, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but Google is also at the subject of a federal antitrust lawsuit over their, their ad business. Have you heard about this at all? No. No. So New baby. It, it, yeah, I know. Well, this actually came out in January of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Never how long mind. It's I been. do. I cannot use that excuse. Yeah. So the the actual you know court uh, um, uh, trial is scheduled for I think September of 2024 as of right now. Uh, so this will be one to keep an eye on and where the federal government will be going. But I wanted to look at how has the stock performed since that time frame of this lawsuit being announced, and it's up 50. <laughs> percent Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, okay. it's, it's extremely difficult to prove a company is a monopoly. It's incredibly difficult. Also, I, I don't see them as a monopoly at all. I don't, there's, they're not even the biggest seller of phones in the world. I don't, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more. Uh, um, I had to go back to Microsoft here too, because a lot of times they reference Microsoft in terms of their yeah. antitrust, uh, you know, kind of proceedings which are in the late 90s um first of all look at this graph i mean jesus christ look at what app i mean microsoft has done since then I insane <laughs> so the initial filing is in like may of uh 1998 that's when the lawsuit was filed over antitrust concerns against microsoft which ultimately microsoft lost and then during the appeal process a settlement was reached with the federal government um which is september 2001 that's when the lawsuit was settled over that time period apple was i mean i'm sorry microsoft was up about 25 percent. that was despite the bursting of the dot-com bubble all right right so how much of an impact did that really have it's questionable now there are interviews where bill gates has talked about the fact that being distracted by this antitrust lawsuit he kind of wasn't didn't have an eye on the ball as far as the, the transition to mobile and maybe why part of the reason why Microsoft was behind the ball when it came to transition to mobile and ultimately lost on the market to Apple. Yeah. The the four hundred and twenty nine thousand percent is is pretty disgusting. I know that's all time, but Jesus. 
Yeah. Um, you know, this, they actually referenced the fact that Apple was a largely a beneficiary of this Microsoft antitrust uh, lawsuit was something else that they mentioned as well. Um, in the pro, uh, kind of uh, the announcement here for this lawsuit. Interesting. I mean, you know, I, I but whether or not it matters over this particular case, can't say. Uh, I, I, I don't think that those would be equivalent, though, right? Because Microsoft had a whole other bunch of things where they were leasing data and there's a whole bunch of stuff in the 80s that is not in that so the equivalent kind of thought process would be you know you obviously in the early days used itunes on a desktop and yeah. microsoft didn't charge apple 30 percent of the cost of all the songs right. sell sold on itunes for that that privilege yeah, which that's is outrageous. what they do effectively through their their app store yeah the 30 percent um, is disgusting yeah. So when you get to a lawsuit, the the part that really matters at the end here is that after they've made their case, they ask for a request for relief. This is like the last section of the lawsuit. This is like, what are we asking for? Um, and this is what the Department of Justice is asking for. They're basically asking the courts to find that Apple's monopoly and to then, um, you know, a, uh, it's a judge, a judge and decree that Apple has acted unlawfully to monopolize or as an alternative attempted to monopolize the performance of smartphone market. Okay. Violations of this law. And then enter relief as needed to cure any anti competitive harm. Right? So they're asking them to do whatever it takes to prevent them from continuing to these monopolist, monopolistic tendencies. Jeez, man. Um, all right, they're asking them to enjoin uh, from continuing to engage in anti-competitive practices described herein, engaging in other practices with the same purpose or effect challenge principles, preventing Apple from using its control of app distribution to undermine cross-platform technologies such as super apps, cloud streaming games, and others. All right, so a super app is a, an app that has multiple functions contained within it that would be able to be put on an iPhone, and then also you can install the same thing on, say, an Android device and have the same kind of user interface across both. Okay. I can see why Apple didn't want that to put in place. So maybe something like that has to get the market. I, I think at the end of the day, I think Apple's going to really come to the table and start negotiating on these point by point. But preventing Apple from using API to deter, uh, undermine cross-platform technologies like messaging. That's what you're talking about, smartwatches and digital wallets. Now, as far as uh, the messaging, you know, it's been uh, said that Apple certainly has the ability to better integrate um, you know, Android users and non-Apple old uh, you know, kind of users into the iMessage program. So you might see some changes come in that realm where you might actually see the green, green bubbles finally go away, um, which was, I think would be a good thing. Uh, whether or not that actually has a negative financial impact on upon Apple that is significant, I highly doubt it. <laughs> so, and then smartwatches, you know, their wearable market, they talk about $40 billion. So you'd, in, in theory, see better competition amongst other, you know, kind of uh, wearable and smartwatches that have better integration to iPhones. Uh, so that would be something that probably would be a bit of a headwind for the Apple Watch. I don't think the walled garden is is necessarily like so what I want to say here anti-competitive as people think. I, I think people would still choose an Apple product often unless another rival product has such an exceedingly high um, kind of cost benefit uh, you know analysis there that they would have to choose that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't. I'm going to be honest. I don't use iPhone for I, so I, I use an iPhone. I don't use it for any of this stuff. I don't, iMessage is kind of a big deal for data. And then there's, there's two things that are huge with the iMessage. One, mm -hmm. when the government went to both Apple and Google asking for data of its users, Google was like, yeah, dude, what, whatever you want, anything, take it. It's yours. Apple's like, yeah. absolutely not. They still got it through other uses, but they at least tried right there's yeah. um, there's something um two these headphones i'm sorry i have tried a couple other competitors headphones it's not even close the t it's just yeah. better there's a big difference there it's not like it's shitty technology that we're being forced to buy i would love someone in the comments to tell me which ones are better than these i've used like two other brands i think they're trash i've i dropped the other brands once and they're done i dropped <laughs> these a 50 times i don't okay I, I don't, I, there's also, you know, there's that, I will say Apple is a dick in the fact that if you buy a MacBook, they solder their SSD to the logic board. So you can't just like, that's horrible. That shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. That was a Tim Cook thing. It, there, there's definitely a lot of things that I think Apple could do better from a consumer rights standpoint. Um, and I think this lawsuit will bring about some of those, but I don't see this lawsuit as materially affecting Apple's long-term 
kind of financial performance. I think they're still going to be a market leader in all of these segments and continue to have like a tremendous, you know, moat around their products because they've created a great uh, brand where people trust and rely upon the brand. Like how much, how much better would a Samsung smartwatch have to be uh, even with this you know, improved Apple integration for me to make that purchase? I think it would have to be quite a high bar for me to make that. I'm, I'm, I'm a analog watch guy anyways, but um, I, I'm just trying to use that as an example. Um, it, you know, some of the other things that they, they did talk about here is you know, basically, um, you know, the Apple wallets and kind of them inserting themselves in the middle of payments. I, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, the uh, Merrick Garland, the attorney general basically said, oh, it decreases like the safety and security. And I'm like, you know, Apple would argue the exact opposite point here because in their view, now even the merchant doesn't get your actual credit card number. And yeah. we've all seen how many like merchants have been hacked and had like credit card number I out have. there. So yeah, okay. I, I'll be interested to see how that plays out in the, in the case. I think Apple's going to end up negotiating here and bringing, you know, kind of finding a middle ground with the government, uh, making some changes that are our pro-consumer, um, but will not have a tremendous negative impact upon their core business. Um, so a- asking for the uh, pr- preliminary and permanent relief and respect competitive nature uh, and additional court fines proper. Um, and then asking for for legal fees, basically they want Apple to pay for the all the attorney general's <laughs> investigations and things, right. uh, which is pretty pretty typical that they would you know ask for something like that. I what I have think? a I would have a hard time believing that this would actually be a monopoly and Amazon Web Services isn't. I like I I, I, I mean, and just in terms of global market share, Amazon Web Services is like a third. iPhones are yeah, twenty. But, uh, and if I know there's a iPhones, lot more to it. iPhones are 63% of the global, like our US, US. smartphone. US. Market, yeah. 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 So, I, I, mean, I, I just, I, yeah, I mean, like, I have a PC. It's I wasn't forced to buy a MacBook. I don't, I disagree with that heavily. I don't, I'm going to buy whatever I think is best. Yeah. I, I don't think that. Ultimately, if, if you know the Department of Justice is, is successful in this, uh, first of all, they're not even asking for breakup of Apple. So, like, I don't even know why CNBC mentioned that in the article. Other than that's, it's a headline, because then you can then yeah. they can yeah, like you know get clicks. Yeah, it's it's not even something that the federal government is, is asked for. Um, I I do think that it will be ultimately pro consumer, and the Apple will make some small like changes in that direction. Um, but I I still think that the iPhone will be the dominant cell phone of the market because. People are entrenched, uh, you know, their their habits are to go back and buy iPhones, whether or not uh, it, it's the best phone in the market um, is a different question. But uh, I think people will continue to purchase and utilize iPhones um, and you know, their their kind of ecosystem is still going to have benefits, even despite like having more better integration with other um, kind of companies that are outside of Apple. But, you know, you're still going to see the uh, seamless integration that's going to be like the ultimate like kind of utility of these because like you know yeah. controlling your apple tvs and all those sort of it devices. should be yeah. if, you, if you're buying all stuff they should cohesively work together that shouldn't be a problem nvidia has like 88 yeah. percent of the gpu market no one's bad and i that's i mean yeah <laughs> yeah not yet that's true all right yeah. uh well let us know what you think i don't i don't think this is gonna do you think it's gonna affect it i don't no i don't think so either all right so you're gonna buy more finney's gonna buy a million dollars more there we go he said it perfect right. yeah